If you are also looking for professional certified structural engineering services or courses, then don't forget to check link in description of this video. What are the different types of foundation? In general, all foundations are divided into two categories, shallow foundation and deep foundations. The term shallow and deep foundation refer to the depth of soil at which it is placed. Generally, if the width of foundation is greater than the depth, it is labeled as shallow foundation. If the width is smaller than the depth of foundation, it is called a deep foundation. Economic feasibility is one of the main factors in the type selection. It is also discussed briefly with each case. Let's discuss the main aspects of different types of foundations. Shallow foundation. As the shallow foundation depth is low and it is economical, it is most popular type of foundation for lightweight structures. Several types of shallow foundation are discussed as follows. Number 1. Isolated or spread footing. This is the most widely recognized and most straightforward shallow foundation type. As it is the most economical type, they are typically utilized for shallow structures. To convey and spread concentrated loads, for instance by columns, they are generally used for ordinary buildings, typically low-rise structures with good soil. The picture of spread footing or shallow foundation is shown. One with reinforcement and one is casted on site. Isolated footing comprises a foundation directly at the base of structure. Generally, every column has its own footing. The straightforward transfer of the loads from the column to the soil. It might be rectangular, square or round shape in its plan. It can comprise both reinforced concrete and non-reinforced concrete material. For the non-reinforced footing, however, the section of footing has to be more prominent to give the vital spreading of the load to the soil. This should be possibly utilized when it is sure that there is no differing or differential settlement happening under the whole structure as it may damage the structural system. Spread footings are usable for the bearing of large loads and it's not recommended to use a spread footing for large or heavy loads with a weak soil. The size of footing can be roughly calculated by dividing the total load at the column base by the allowable bearing capacity of the soil as per the soil report or soil investigation. The following are the types of spread footing. Number 1. Single pad footing. Number 2. Stepped footing for a column. Sloped footing for a column. Wall footing without step. Wall footing with step. Grillage foundation. To decide when to use shallow foundation, it is necessary to know when it is economical. It is economical when the load of the structure is relatively low, the columns are not closely placed, the bearing capacity of the soil is high at shallow depth, wall footing or strip footing. Wall footing is also known as continuous footing. This type is used to distribute loads of structure on non-structural load-bearing walls to the ground in such a way that the load-bearing limit of soil is not outperformed. It runs along the direction of the wall. The width of wall footing is usually two to three times of the width of the wall. The wall footing is a continuous slab strip running along the length of the wall. It can be stone, brick, reinforced concrete, etc. are used for the construction of wall foundations. On account of block walls, the footing generally comprises of courses of bricks, the lowest course being generally double the thickness of the wall above. If the load on the wall is substantial or the soil is of low bearing capacity, then reinforced concrete foundation type can be used. A picture showing a reinforced concrete wall footing. Wall footing is economical when Loads to be transmitted are of small magnitude. It is placed on dense sand and gravel. Let's discuss the third type of shallow foundation that is combined footing. The combined footing is very similar to the isolated footing when the columns of the structure are carefully placed or the bearing capacity of the soil and their footing overlaps each other. Combined footing is provided. It is fundamentally a blend of different isolated footings which uses the property of various balances in a single footing dependent on the necessity of the structure. The foundation which are made common to more than one column are called combined footing. There are different types of combined footing. 
including slab type, slab and beam type, and rectangular raft and strap beam type. They may be square, T-shaped or trapezoidal. The main objective is the uniform distribution of the loads under the entire area of footing. For this, it is necessary to coincide with the center of gravity of the footing with the center of gravity of the loads to minimize the eccentric effects on the foundation. A picture showing a combined footing with a strap beam, also with the reinforced one. Combined footings are economical when the columns are placed close to each other, when the columns are close to the property line and the isolated footing would cross the property line or become too much eccentric. Dimensions of one side of the foundation are restricted to some low value. Let's discuss four type of shallow foundation that is cantilever or strap footing. The strap footings are similar to combined footing. The reason for considering or choosing strap footing are identical to the combined one. In strap footing, the foundation under the col which the columns is built individually are connected by a strap beam. Generally, when the edge of foundation can not be extended beyond the property line or due to any other reason, the exterior footing is connected by a strap beam with the interior footing. A picture showing a strap beam connecting the eccentric column and the isolated footing to another neighboring beam to provide balance. Let's discuss the fifth type of shallow foundation that is raft or mat foundation. Raft or mat foundation are used where other shallow foundations are not suitable or the surface area of shallow foundations or combined footing is becoming too large so they are then called raft. It is also recommended in situations where the bearing capacity of the soil is inadequate. The load of the structure is to be distributed over a large area or the structure is subjected continuously to shocks and jerks. A rough foundation consists of reinforced concrete slab spread over all over the columns to transfer the structural load using a single foundation or T-beam slab section paced over the entire structure. In this type, the whole basement floor slab acts as the foundation. The total load of the structure is spread evenly over the entire area of the structural footing. This is called a raft because in this case the building seems like a vessel that floats on a sea of soil. A picture showing reinforcement for the raft and you can see the walls as well as the column reinforcement is tied to the raft and the concrete will be casted on it. Raft foundations are economical when the soil is weak and the loads has to be spread over a large area due to the weak soil or if the loads are very large. The structure includes a basement. Columns are closely placed. Other kinds of shallow foundations are not feasible. Differential settlement of the structure is to be prevented or minimized. Deep foundations. As the name suggests, these type of foundations transfer the structural loads to the deeper strata. Let's discuss the type of deep foundation. Number one, pile foundation. Pile is a common type of deep foundation. They are used to reduce the cost of the structural transmission of the load from the superstructure to the deeper soil strata. As per soil condition and considerations, it is desirable to transmit the loads of the soil that are beyond the reach of the shallow foundation. The following are the types of pile foundations. Number one, based on functions or use. Sheet piles, load bearing piles, end bearing piles, friction piles, soil compactor piles. There are also piles that are combination of load bearing piles, end bearing piles or friction piles. Classification of the piles based on materials and construction method. Number one, timber pile, concrete pile, sheet piles, composite piles. Pile is a slender member with a small cross section similar to that of a column compared to its length. It is used to transmit foundation load to the deeper soil or rock strata when the bearing capacity of soil near the surface is relatively low. Pile transmit load either by skin friction or bearing. 
Piles are also used to resist structures against uplift and provide a structure stability against lateral and overturning forces. Pile is a slender member with a smaller cross section compared to its length. It is used to transmit foundation loads to the deeper soil or rock strata when the bearing capacity of soil near the surface is relatively low. Pile spreads load either by skin friction or bearing. Piles are also used to resist structures against uplift and provide stability against overturning forces as well as lateral loads. A picture showing piles hammered or casted into the ground. Pile foundations are economical when soil with great bearing capacity is at greater depth. When there are chances of construction or irrigation canals in nearby area, which may call is cause erosion and settlement in shallow foundations. When it is very expensive to provide raft or mat foundation due to huge area or the cost of concrete casting is very high. When the foundation is subjected to heavy concentrated loads. In marshy places with weak soil conditions. When the top soil layer is weak or compressible in nature. In case of bridges, when the scoring is more in the riverbed, it can again be classified based on the material and mechanism to transfer load or function as discussed previously. Let's discuss the second type of deep foundation, that is, pier foundation. Pier is an underground structure that transmits a more massive load which cannot be carried by shallow foundations. It is usually shallower than piles. The pier foundation is generally utilized in multi-story structures since the base region is determined by the plan strategy for the rectangular establishment. The single pier load test is wiped out. Along these lines, it is increasingly well known under the tight conditions. This is a picture showing a pier, pier cap, pile cap and then piles. This is a pier foundation arrangement. Pier foundation is cylindrical structure member that transfers heavy load from the superstructure to the soil by end bearing. However, the difference between pile foundation and pier foundation is that unlike piles, piers can only transfer load by bearing and not by skin infection. It is by the design nature. Pier foundation is economical when sound strata under a decomposed rock layer is at the top. The topsoil is stiff clay that resists driving the bearing pile. When a heavy load is to be transferred to the soil, pier foundation has many advantages. It has a broad scope of assortment with regard to the structure. There are different materials we can use to build in our spending limit. It sets aside cash time and it doesn't require broad remover of ton of cement. Bearing limits can be increased by beaming the base. Along with the advantages, it has few disadvantages as well. If one column is damaged, it can prop a critical harm to the general structure. However, pier foundation can resist such catastrophic failure or at least delay the time of critical failures. It can be of vital wasteful if not protected appropriately. Floors must be intensely vigorously protected and shielded from sitters. Let's discuss the third type of deep foundation that is Kazayan foundation. Kazayan foundation is a watertight retaining structure used as a bridge pier, construction of dam, etc. It is generally used in structures that require foundation beneath a river or similar water bodies. The reason for choosing Kazayan is that it can be used as a floated to desired location then sunk into the place. For example, a picture showing Kazan foundation. It can be used in oil rigs or underground structures as well as the water retaining facilities. A Kazan foundation is ready-made hollow cylinder depressed into the soil up to the desired level and then filled with concrete, which ultimately converts into a foundation. It is mostly used as bridge pier. Kazans are sensitive to construction procedures and lack construction expertise in many parts of the world. There are several types of Kazan foundations. Box Kazans, Floating Kazans, Pneumatic Kazans, 
open kazans sheeted kazans excavated kazans design foundations are economical when the pile cap requirement is to be minimized noise and vibration needed to be reduced it has to be placed beneath water bodies highly lateral and axial loading capacity is required for watching please hit the like and subscribe to the channel